Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle J.C.R.B. Kraus. We're here on a fine, fine Wednesday. It is Wednesday, my dudes. So are you, are you ready, Ian? Are you ready for Wednesday? I'm barely ready for any day that's in front of me, but by <laughs> God, I'm going to sojourn on. We have standard questions for today's q a where do these questions come from sir uh these are all from email and youtube so a, a good mix here all righty uh, let's jump right on in starting off with this one from big sonic fan patrick why oh why is it that fiona fox was never properly depicted having a confrontation with dr ivo eggman slash robotnik it would seem that among all the characters amongst the zones of the Sonic comic book multiverse that she would have logically had all of her anger, fury, rage, and above all, hate aimed at that man among all the people that have, quote, ruined her life, considering that he is downright responsible for everything she suffered. I was really hoping Ian would have created an epic story where she had an epic showdown before the reboots happened. If Fiona Fox versus Dr. Eggman Smackdown would have been epic. Well, I mean, you're not wrong, but everyone hated Robotnik. He was, <laughs> he was the universal bad man. Everyone's misery was from him. She's not special in that way. How dare you? I mean, what made her some interesting was that she held the heroes at fault, and they were not necessarily blameless. That was the interesting part of the conflict. I mean, yeah, she had a beef with Robotnik. So did everyone else. Take a number, sister. Get in line. <laughs> um, and if she did decide to go to war with Robotnik, she's not the type who would, you know, settle for a defeat or nothing. And she's not going to win. So you're asking me to write a story where Robotnik kills Fiona in a failed revenge plot. And I don't think anybody wants that. Oof. No, that's bad. We only want to kill Tommy Turtle. We don't want to kill Fiona. How ironic would that be that she, you know, storms the castle. She does a decent amount of damage, but ultimately loses and gets roboticized. So she's back to being a robot again. <laughs> oh, irony. Is that what you want? Because you I'll deliver. Oh, no. Ian, no. Stop. Stop, Ian. No. No. All right. Here's a question from Callum Q. We know from a past podcast that if Ian could be any Transformer, he would be a Dinobot. So my question is, what do you guys think of Dinobot, the Predacon turned Maximal Warrior with a heart of gold from the Beast Wars cartoon? I never saw a ton of Beast Wars, but I did see enough to see some of Dinobot's arc. And you, you gotta love the face turn. You know, your, your Zuko's, your Razor's, your... Dinobots, the, you know, I am the bad guy, but really I'm not a hole into this evil thing. Maybe the good guys are right. Oh, wait, they can be accepting. But are they truly accepting? They trust this. Tr yes, they can. They can trust him because he's he's Dinobot. He's cool. He's a robot velociraptor. Of course you can trust him. <laughs> but yeah, that that archetype is always super fun. And they, from what I remember, they did a good job. It was entertaining. Nice. Uh, pff, I, I barely remember Beast Wars, so I, I have no opinion. Sorry. I mean, the very basic premise of the classic showdown between Optimus Prime, you know, the virtuous and wise leader. Yes. Megatron, the self-serving sociopath. And then you add an extra layer of it's a gorilla fighting a Tyrannosaurus. Uh, yeah. How do you make it more metal? That's how you do it. Just right there. I don't I don't remember what Megatron looked like in Beast Wars. I seem to remember it was one of the better designs. Yeah, I mean, I remember. And then he turned into a Tyrannosaurus. So. OK, I, I remember that uh, Optimus is a big ape gorilla i don't remember yeah. exactly yeah that's that's about it gorilla fighting tyrannosaurus that's enough to sell me <laughs> and then you put on top of it that they're robots okay. iconic robots just mm, yeah good stuff okay okay i'm I'm, be I'm being shown megatron and okay i remember this and the show was weird 
the nineties were weird. CG was CG is weird. <laughs> looks like a looks like a video game cutscene. <laughs> Next question here is from the Big RG. You've mentioned that Sonic the Hedgehog two hundred actually had about five different pitches for what the comic would focus on while giving Eggman a break, including what would be the Iron Dominion and King Nagas arcs. What were the other pitches, and which ones were you personally hoping would get approved? It has been so long, I don't remember. I do know that King Nagas was what I wanted. That was the storyline I had been building towards the entire time. That's where I wanted to go with things, and that Iron Dominion was the joke pitch. That was what I put in there intentionally to pad things out and to be thrown out. Right. And hilariously, that was the one that got picked to go with. Yep. Uh, I feel like the other ideas in there did see some life, some shape or form, but I would have to go digging deep into the old documents. If I still have them on this hard, it might be backed up, <laughs> but, um, clearly they weren't that brilliant because I don't have them committed to memory. Alrighty. Here's one from certified nobody. What is the Sonic game universe's connection to the Super Genesis wave? I'd assumed it wasn't destroyed, but was it one of the few zones to survive the reboot, or was it created in a new multiverse? Does it have any connections to the In Another Time, In Another Place universe, or is just or is that just a nearly identical world? No oh boy. Uh, um, hmm. So first, we have to assume that the multiverse of pre-reboot Archie was its own thing and that the game universe existed in its context separately than the game continuity that we have today. If, if you can make that division, if you will accept that separation of worldviews, in which case, no, the Super Genesis Wave ate everything and... The another time, another place was a kind of way of saying, what, did we do that post reboot? Did we have any of those post reboot? Come to think of it. Uh, I don't think we did. I don't think so. No. So moot point. Um, the another time, another place thing in the pre reboot was basically a way of saying, OK, these stories happened in continuity. We just don't necessarily have the time to fully adapt them and work them in. Like, just assume that the game events mostly happened within the context of the comic universe. Right. Um, we've, we've kind of talked about this in the past. Not everything is going to perfectly fit. But just think of, you know, Archie Sonic as its own thing. Mm. And that Game Sonic is its own thing. And don't try to perfectly conflate the two. Because there there is no universal truth to this. Right. The reboot was 252, right? Yeah. Well, the last Another Time, Another Place story was in 242. So just before. Mm. Not, okay. not, just under a year before. So neat. And our next question is from Tony C. I'm curious. You're a writer, so you have a sixth sense for these things. It's time to ask the big question. Have you been curious about the Sonic game writers? What do you think of Shiro Mayakawa and Ken Pontak styles of writing? Likewise, any thought you could share on any other writer from the games? Uh, I feel like this is... I, I'm not putting this at your feet, Tony, but this is a potentially loaded question. Uh, this was this was from before you were announced as the writer of even Frontiers, then, by the way. Even so, then. But, yeah. Um... Because I, it's the people will read animosity into things that are not meant to be antagonistic. Right. I think everyone who has written for the Sonic games has done the best of their ability within the circumstances. Yeah. And right. Even. Um, and it's probably good to just leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, you have I some, think you, you, I will say that I think Pontic and Graf have gotten way too much vitriol than they deserve. Oh, yeah. Um, whether or not you high, hold their writing in high esteem or low esteem, there are extenuating factors. 
and I don't think anything that they have written that is distinctly theirs is necessarily abhorrent. I I really enjoyed Colors myself, but... <laughs> I did too, but people really like to crap on it these days. It's like, wow, the 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 uh when Colors first came out, it was like people loved it. And now it's like I don't know. There's there's it's a lot more mixed now. I have to wonder how much of that is the remaster, but I, I don't know. It's just weird. People don't like people don't like the jokey Sonic. They don't like the the meta Sonic. I don't I don't I... know that distinction that's yeah i i kind of stop it I, stop it just don't call the boost games if you have to but the meta era come on now oh <laughs> uh, uh, well it's all weird uh, people people mad about their blue hedgehog being silly he's, he's a goofy blue hedgehog who runs real fast he he's silly by his very existence. <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, so tired. So tired. Here's one from Darker. You've said a few times that the Archie world and the game world are in no way connected by any means. But you also said in an interview that the games are in the multiverse of Archie. So were you saying that the Archie have their game version in the multiverse, like Archie Game Sonic? yeah more or less and it's trying to pay i'm trying to make everybody happy and that's never gonna work it's the idea that you know the game canon is the true canon it is the basis of which all things come from but the archie canon was so much more diverse and prolific at the time it's kind of hard to say that it's just the spinoff material you know the game canon dictates what's going to happen in the Archie stuff, but the Archie stuff went in a whole bunch of wild new directions. So I mean that I'm trying to remember what I meant back then. And, you know, part of it may have been, I was wrong or have since changed my mind, but I think the, I think what I was trying to get at is that the game stuff influences the Archie stuff, but the Archie stuff doesn't influence the game stuff. So the, Archie multiverse as vast and chaotic as it was, was never going to reflect within the game stuff, which is where I mean, there's no connection there, but it is clear that the game events have to be canon to the Archie stuff. Otherwise it's, you know, not in sync. So there is that bit of connection. So we're going to, you know, we're going to just go with the way you put it darker and that the, Archie universe has the game version. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's a moot point. The book's dead, but <laughs> here's one. That's for... not a satisfying answer. I know. Yeah, I know. Nobody's satisfied. Nobody liked that. Here's a question from Dead Sonic 890. I want to get this off my chest for quite some time in regards of a very important question to you guys. Is it possible that the Sonic multiverse is across all dimensions and other multiverses as a whole? If so, why couldn't the Genesis wave affect them all by chance? As it only goes for Archie, Sonic, and Mega Man only. And an added note is that does other multiverses and crossovers tie in with the Archie Sonic multiverse? Or is it just Sonic and Mega Man and that's it? I apologize if this bothers you guys. I wanted to share this out for the results for it. I'm not bothered um, by it. Are you bothered by it again? No, 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 no. It's this is good. <laughs> multiverses are messy. Yeah. But think of it this way. Think of the Sonic multiverse as like a beach ball <laughs> and think of the Mega Man multiverse as its own beach ball and that all that is around them is nothing. And then for the crossover, you have these two spheres kind of touch and overlap and then are separate again. So when the Super Genesis wave and all that nonsense happens in the Sonic beach ball, it's contained within that ball. It's not going to cross over with the Mega Man ball. What about the? And I don't know why I'm gesturing like because this is audio only. You can't see what I'm doing. But what about the? What about timey wimey ball? Big well, ball of that, wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. That tesseract thing is bouncing all over the place. You can ignore it. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> 
Next question is from Dragon's Den of Variety. If you're able to, can you tell us about any possible plans you had for Ben Mutsky in the post-reboot Archie comics? Because I was honestly interested in seeing how Mutsky's character was going to be like and his relationship with Sonic and the other Freedom Fighters compared to when he was just Sonic's pet in the pre-reboot. Uh, there wasn't a lot planned for him, at least on my end. It was kind of like he was just going to be the kid sidekick to Uncle Chuck, the Marty McFly to his Doc Brown, the the Morty to his Rick Sanchez, if you will. Although Uncle Chuck is entirely more wholesome than that. <laughs> it was Ben's existence was to show that this was a different version of the Sonic that you knew growing up with the books, but that we were still trying to pay homage to it, that we weren't just throwing everything away and forgetting about it. So it was, it was meant as kind of a olive branch to the folks who had been reading for so long and now had this new continuity continuity foisted upon them. It's like, we're updating things. It's going to be more in line with the games, but we aren't just going to ignore where we came from. So Mutsky still exists, but now he is a Mobian and he doesn't have a huge role to play. He's kind of a tertiary character at best, but he's still there. We're not just throwing him away. Mm. I, I mean, I, I don't want to see pickle Chuck, but <laughs> no, <laughs> no, don't do that. I, I don't, I never want to hear. I never want to hear Chuck go. Wub, lub, a dub, dub. I don't need that. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, I know very little. Motsky, we got, we got to go. Uh, you got to go down the, the infinite finite curve. <laughs> oh, jeez, Chuck. <laughs> oh boy, this is. Hmm. Uh, someone's gonna draw this, and you know what? Fine, have fun. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> things get really out of hand when the bean seeks start showing up oh we <laughs> uh would it surprise you if i said i'd still never watched freaking morty yeah okay cool it's all good yeah never really watched it i mean i've seen enough clips to kind of get an idea of at least what's going on with the, who the characters are but yeah <laughs> It has its moments. Yeah. But then the some whole... folks get a little too into it, but, but, the, but you then can the... say that of any fandom. But then the whole McDonald's thing happened, and then that just got oh, weird. God. Yeah, it just got real weird, and I was like, hmm, weird. Ugh. Oh, fandom. We love you. In spite of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from Vlad C. Is there a chance we could see the power rings from Sonic Runners make an appearance in IDW? Uh, not likely, given that Runners is dead. I mean, yeah, there's the pay version that got updated, but it's or the newer version, but it hasn't been updated ever since launch. So I think it's kind of forgotten at this point. When there's the fan run version of it, that's different but yeah that's not official yeah so god the original one was so good though yeah it is a fun little game here's one from geo after this we'll take a break what would knuckles and silver's favorite anime be <sighs> i don't know i think knuckles would be into any of those sports animes that go like super hard when it comes to any kind of <laughs> action scene would 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 knuckles uh would he have like a, a a kinship would he feel a kinship to like one punch man or maybe fist of the north star <laughs> maybe fist of the north star i think saitama would frustrate him because you know how do you get that strong that's not you know he just did basic calisthenics basic straight training that's not enough that doesn't make any sense Knuckles does all that too, and he can't, you know, do all the things Saitama does. <laughs> it's not realistic. He wants the real story, damn it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, any of those, you know, sports dramas where it's, you know, 
lots of introspection and lots of thought. And then they actually swing the bat or serve the tennis ball. And it gets represented as like some kind of cosmic event. He would get hyped for that. Uh, Silver is full on any shonen show. He is super into Gurren Lock because the whole idea of willpower overcoming adversity against any odds is right up his alley. <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of Sonic right there. I mean, have you heard the music? That just <laughs> that's just enough, just enough of that right so- there. Sonic lives it. Silver wants it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good point, good point. Silver has absolutely cosplayed as Kamina when nobody's looking. The power of friendship. It's what we need. We all need the power of friendship. All right. Well, we are uh, at the end of the halfway point. So let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back with more questions on the Bumblecast. We have returned, and it's time to get back in. Got some more YouTube questions here. First up from Chaos Saber Moo. If the Mega Man 1 Robot Masters have to be shut down by the time Mega Man 7 rolls around, how did they show up in Worlds Collide? In the time travel issue with Xander, he sees the crossover after the events of Mega Man 10, so the one Robot Master should be shut down and won't be able to show up and help. I'm thinking we're getting some continuity crossed here, but it's been so long since I went through it. I don't quite remember myself, but in Worlds Collide, all the Robot Masters are just remanufactured through Tiny Wimey Wibbly Wobbly for that beautiful two page spread. Oh, yeah, that that's they're not the original Robot Masters. They're what have been plucked and cultivated by the doctors for the big old fight. Mm-hmm. So I. Uh, can't quite remember how Xander's tumble through time played out, but if there is a hiccup there, uh, time travels funky. What can I tell you? <laughs> He's got an eye patch. You didn't see it clearly. Uh, jazz hands. Wave, wave confetti. Run, Kyle. Run. Run. Ah! Look the other way. <laughs> run away. Run away. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's the great thing about crossovers, though, right? I mean, who cares? It's a crossover. You can do whatever I you mean, want. I, I tried to be careful about it. Uh, I, I, I know, I know, I know. But, you know. It's been still, a while. I can't quite remember how we approached it all. It's a crossover. Rule of cool trumps all. That's how, it, that's how, this, yeah. that's how this things go, man. I must cross T's and dot I's as best I can. Yes, you can do your best, but also, dude, look at that. It's all the Mega Mans ever. <laughs> all of them. Wow. Look at all these man Megas. Look at all them. Holy crap. And they're all going to kill us. That's awesome. <laughs> Here's one from Levi C. So... When will that original Metal Knuckles art be shared online? Mm, probably never. Da, da, da. I, they don't really share a lot of... You can always politely ask the social media team to see if they'll share it for something cool, but there's probably no set time or agenda to do so. Here's one from Miles Deep Per Hour. I really need this answer for, my, for a little project I'm making. How big is the Sky Patrol... And post reboot, exactly, because what I have in mind does not match with the, with the insides of it. I don't think we ever had a set size or dimensions. Um, it, it's big, like it, it, it's big. That's about all I can say. <laughs> it's got room to house everyone comfortably with a couple of guest rooms. It's got a functioning kitchen. It's got a training room. It's got a big old honking engine to keep it afloat. It's yeah, but did it have actual dimensions? It had a pretty sizable bridge. It, it it's it's big, so whatever you're doing, you cannot contradict canon because there is no canon on actual size. <laughs> Time to break out the rulers and, and try and extrapolate based on artwork that's not in scale. 
<laughs> or just go with the Doctor Who uh, explanation. <laughs> it's Maybe. bigger on the inside. Yep. Mm-hmm. And here's one from MSF. If Knuckles Chaotix is non-canon, what does that say about SBO's appearance in Sonic the Fighters? Is Sonic the Fighters also non-canon? Then what's the deal with Bean, Bark, and Honey? Are Heavy and Bomb doomed to never appear again? All excellent questions that I hope to get answered one day myself. <laughs> I mean, Sonic the Fighters is a problem because it has eight freaking Chaos Emeralds in it. So, once again, uh, don't think about it too hard. <laughs> some stuff might have to be okay. Some and Chaotix might get brought back out of obscurity and put back into canon. I don't. Yeah. Oh man, we are we are living in unknowable times. <laughs> we'll just have to see how it pans out. Mm. Yep. It's weird. Well, the thing is, is you got to remember, Knuckles Chaotix wasn't non-canon at the time they made Sonic the Fighters. I, I think that's... that's There's that's that, too. really about it. <laughs> What's going to be really weird is if Knuckles Chaotix does get dragged back into the canon, but the modern characterizations and ages are retroactively affixed to the classic versions mm -hmm. <sighs> well we'll see mm -hmm. we'll see mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we got a question here from that one sonic guy no not that one not that one either that one. that one that one sonic guy ah gotcha that one how fast was sonic going in issue 42 of idw sonic it seems like he broke the sound barrier multiple times I know it's kind of his thing to move at supersonic speeds, but it's never really stated just what his speed limit is. No, but you can assume at least Mach 1, because you're right, he was breaking the sound barrier. Yeah. If Sky Patrol is big, Sonic was going fast. <laughs> he, is, he, go, he can go as fast as the plot needs him to go at the time. Here's a question from Hypersonic Extreme. Here's a very important question. Did the source of all that created the Sonic multiverse also make the realms above space and time, such as the Chaos Force? Hmm. That is a good question. Because you don't really ever see the two... Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't think that was ever really addressed. Hmm. I, granted, it's been a long time since I've worked in that continuity, but... Hmm. I don't know. Unless the source of all was kind of like the universal matter and the chaos uh, chaos force was the universal energy, maybe. Like maybe there was one central thing that divided into those two and then everything else in creation was rendered from that, maybe? But I don't know. Hmm. I don't know either. I do know is we got a question here from Bony Cheese. We always talk about bringing back sticks from the boom side of the franchise to IDW, but what about the villain, Lyric the Ancient? How would you incorporate slash characterize him in the comics? See, I actually pitched this to a couple different avenues, and each time it got this kind of patient nod of, it's not a bad pitch, but it's lyrics, so no. And it's like, come on, mm. gimme, gimme, get it. So it's not going to happen. I've, I've kind of been spurned enough to know that this wouldn't go through. But personally, I'd like to reinvent him as a Knuckles villain. I mean, he's got those big old mecha arms. You know, put him in there as a brawler type against Knuckles. He's got the brute mechanical strength to go toe to toe. And do this kind of like Donkey Kong jungle beat game style of beat him up. Mm. He's got the intelligence that gives him the edge over Knuckles, but Knuckles has the guile to be able to kind of work around it. He's got ties to ancient stuff. Was he the enemy that Pachamaka was trying to get the Chaos Emeralds to defeat? You know, did I use proper English there? You get what I mean. Was Lyric the ancient enemy of the Knuckles tribe? You know, it could. Is, did he make the, the Gizoids or something? Like, use him as, like, this ancient evil and give Knuckles, like, an actual villain to fight and that actually can tie to his past and can be, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with him with the Rock'em Sock'em robot fighting. And, yeah, that, that got passed on hard more than once. Oof. Oof. 
Yeah. Of course, if <laughs> if somewhere down the line this actually shows up, you know that I managed to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's not happening <laughs> Ian, is if this... i if i just straight up said it on the show i'm pretty confident it ain't happening <laughs> ian is the sega now <laughs> <laughs> here's a question from michael b were there any plans to introduce a freedom fighter group for Meropus? no i don't think so i think we were content with the small group that we had there all right, next question is from Teaser. Shadow is biologically immortal. He doesn't age. So, where is he in Silver's future? That's a question I'm curious about, as Shadow is my favorite character, especially when people aren't treating him as an edgelord, but as a person with mental scars. No, you probably hate what I've been doing to him in the show over the past few weeks. Mm, sorry. Uh, <laughs> in terms of Sonic 06, like, he was supposed to have been imprisoned for all time in that weird floating mecha crucifix looking thing but they also changed the past so omega was never given orders to take shadow down so he shouldn't have been locked away so he should be kicking around somewhere i don't know that is something that could be explored but it might it runs the risk of being a little confusing because 50 200 year old shadow shouldn't look any different than present shadow you know so that might be confusing to folks who are not super up to date on their sonic lore but eh, yeah whatever that if we ever get to it whatever i mean marketing you know that's why shadow's there marketing makes sense and our last question green soda <laughs> Has Sega ever told you what the Mania Plus ending means? And where did classic Eggman go? Eggman forces? Why was the Heavy King shown more prominently in Mania Plus? He even replaced Eggman in the game over screen. Did Sega ever plan on counting the story of Plus, or was it just a way to make it different from the main game? I'm sorry to say I have no answers for any of that. I don't know. I, well, mean, I could speculate, but I don't know. Well, then why are you even here? Well, I had to answer questions. Well, you're satisfied. No, nah, I'm not satisfied because Discord is really steeping my beans <laughs> with the way it's cutting out. I'm ah. sorry, but Ian. I'd rather be honest than inaccurate. <sighs> well, now you're worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always worried about it. Uh, I worry well, over everything. Why? Why? Why do you care? Who cares? What? Who's who's going to come to you and be like, Ian, you were wrong about this, and I hate you for it forever. No one Kyle, is ever going to do that. That's Kyle, stupid. we've been doing this long enough. You know that ain't true. No, it's it's true. I swear. I, I, bet, I bet the people out there would understand if you misspoke. Or maybe you wrote a book and it's got some mistakes in it. Maybe people would be like, yeah, you know, writing a big, giant book is hard work and it takes a lot of effort and uh you know sometimes some things slip through the cracks and you know sorry about that but you know i think people understand that right we're gonna give a big thank you to all the folks who make this show possible big thank you to daniel h alex p james k john b jennifer r robotnik holmes samuel p sam cybercat torchbound mike b coupling crew 128 do is this din dk andrew d dave m off salute your cat scruffy matt chris a j frost sony john m noni hero of light 13 jib don b yami m lee h k lisa m ryan d chevelle piggy bank blue title gamer tick tick invade turbo tunas ben w fiona and m final neil sonic 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 jonathan d ian daddler the dalek chaos universe sonic legacy daniel b godzilla nimrick pendanticat Red the Supernamic, Dove, Pen Dolce, Joe S, Chad, Solar Stain, The Name is X, Jennifer H, Preston M, Nathan J, Ava Arctic, Les, Alphamon or Yukon, Sapphire Scarletta, Chase L, Noah S, Axis, Patron Saint of the Chicken Nuggies, St. Jerry, Robin, Cordero Highwind, Professor Rye, Cameron H, Red W, 
Callum Q, Bowen, mm, Owen BD, not Bowen BD, Owen BD, Kimmy Co, Radry, Xanderoni the Painter, Scurvy the Pirate Hog, Joey the Sonic Fan, Just a Mountain Soul, Turbo Crooker, Matty H, Louis J, Ty H, N Zephyr, KJB, Mox, Rusty Cook, Four Sonic Fan, Techno Cinema, Netra 14, and Tails, Dream Boaten, Chaos Vote. Chaos Voltage, Darusaville, Lacey M, Unlikely Veronica, Many Hats, Yoshi Milkman, Happy Time, Zenith, Joyce Stick, Idira, and Enter the Gecko. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. And uh, after this is done, I'm going to go uh, throw Discord in the trash. <laughs> Being garbage. <laughs> truly, truly garbage. I, I mean, I mean, it's great that it facilitates us being able to record this show easily but it's also like really obnoxious in the way it cuts out and everything i'm gonna ah. well, well, while kyle has an aneurysm you be good to yourselves be good to each other and we'll see you friday for a special guest episode of the Bumblecast. Ah. Ah. rage rage i'm gonna rage man I'm on my brain. <laughs> I've been on a Homestar Runner kick lately, and now you just sound like strong, sad, getting angry. Oh, I was I was doing more of a, yeah, what's his face from Sonic Boom, but sure. <laughs> I'm being asked if I'm okay. No! <laughs> when am I ever okay? <laughs> you, you know me. I'm never okay. But at least I haven't decided that uh, it's a good idea to get into NFTs. <laughs> no. 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 No, no, no. Hero of Light 13. G oh, no! B Yami M. <laughs> you said Jim. You said Jim, and it went Jim. <laughs> 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 All right, do it yeah. again. You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Like I said, I've been on a Homestar kick, and there was a Halloween cartoon that I hadn't seen before. Like, I don't remember this at all. And it's got Homestar in a Orange Marshy mascot outfit. Yeah. Except the mascot, mascot outfit actually talks and emotes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And he's harassing. <laughs> like, hey there, boy, like a man. These new fluffy puff marshmallows are so good. Who do you think took the bite out of my head? Who? Who? <laughs> and then Homestar appears in the mouth upside down, disconnected from the legs. <laughs> He's like, oh, hey, Deco G. Uh, would you mind getting me out? I don't want to die in here. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know how they managed to do this perfect balance of surrealist horror <laughs> and hilarity with Marshy every single time. I mean, they really, they really nailed this, that sort of character for him. It's like, just... I mean, watching some of the older stuff, it's like, yeah, it's a little rough around the edges. They're finding their voice. But yeah, some of that stuff is still like, oh, my God, there's one email where it's. You know, dear strong bad, is there any emails you want to do over? Yeah. So he pulls up over. the classic Allie and Allie's sister. Yep, yep. <laughs> but it's going poorly, and he's like, The chids, get in here and help me figure out how to woo the Allie and Allie's sister. And it's Homestar colored over in yellow highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Squeak do, I'm the cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is that so funny? 
<laughs> I don't, I don't, oh my god. Man, yeah, there's a reason why uh, one of the chaps' brothers is, like, still doing stuff. I guess Matt is on the Owl House. So, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So, yeah, they, those guys, they're still, they're still around. There was live streams, and they had some kind of program where they could, like, I don't know if it was, like, inputs so that they could lip sync or if it was some kind of, like, very early VTuber-type rig. But it was, you know, they were doing a chat relay with Homestar. And, you know, they he'd pop up with someone and go, Hidia, spin my butter. And the person, very confused, would reach towards their webcam and you would slap. And then they would make yep. the animation for the buzzer spin on his hat. And it was funny to see him riffing live. And <laughs> one of the funniest things is he's going through a relay and he comes up to a couple of ladies and he goes, oh, Hidia, show me your boobs. And so they flash him. And he starts cracking up, going, "Oh, I, I didn't know that was actually going to work." <laughs> <laughs> and just hearing him struggle to maintain character was oh, hilarious. <laughs> like he swapped out of that camera super fast, and you could just hear him cracking up. <laughs> Oh, that's great. 